The Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions will please come to order. This hearing is for reviewing the opioid, the opioid Crisis Response Act of 2018, which Senator Murray and I have recommended with input from virtually every member of this committee. Uh, our intention is to mark up the bill and report legislation to the full Senate on April 24th, along with cosmetics legislation and some other pending bipartisan legislation. So I visited the neonatal intensive care unit at Niswanger's Children's Hospital in Johnson City, Tennessee. The hospital opened a new separate unit within their NICU last May to help deal with all the infants being, being born in drug withdrawal. Of the 30 babies in the unit last week, 10 were in drug withdrawal. The babies stay in the hospital for at least five days. Some stay for weeks. While at Niswanger, I heard heartbreaking stories of how the opioid crisis has claimed the lives of loved ones too soon. One story is about a man named Dustin Iverson. After serving two tours in Iraq and Afghanistan with the Mississippi National Guard, Dustin settled in a small town, Alabama. A year and a half ago, Dustin was found dead at 29 years old from an apparent overdose. His death turned a national crisis from a news headline into a painful personal experience for his aunt, Trish Tanner. Trish is currently the chief pharmacy officer at Ballard Health, a regional health care provider. She was enrolled in an executive fellowship program when Dustin died, and as part of her program, she worked on an in-depth project on ways to reduce opioid prescribing. She has said about the project, I researched the opioid crisis in our region. As Dustin Zant and as a pharmacist, I have a duty <clears throat> and a desire to bring about change now. This is a way for us to redeem what has been lost. As a result of Trish and her colleagues' efforts, the health system she was working for at the time, now part of Ballard Health, reduced the number of inpatient opiate doses administered in its hospitals by more than 40% last year. In January, Sam Quinones testified before our committee that we need a moonshot to solve this crisis. I think it may require the effort and resources of a moonshot, but I also think it'll be different and harder than a moonshot because this is not something that can be undertaken by a single agency in Washington, D.C. It will require an all-hands, on-deck work and solution from states, communities, and local partners. As we've heard, this crisis touches more than just those suffering from an opioid addiction. It touches children and grandparents and doctors and nurses and law enforcement. And so we ask for written comments on the draft by close of business today on what more the federal government can do. We look forward to hearing more about that from our witnesses.